So welcome back to the LCP Digital Learning Channel and today I have a great video about the new update in Keynote. It's going to be a super exciting update that's going to add some great new features but I also want you to be ready so that as, as these apps update you're not taken off guard if the buttons move around and you're ready for those students who are ready to learn some new things. So let's jump right into the iPad. Okay, so here we are in Keynote and I've got a couple icons already ready to go. Now the first thing I wanna show you is that some of the buttons are gonna look very different and I want you to be prepared when this update is on your students' iPads that you know what to do. So I'm gonna show you the first one which is Magic Move. So normally again, we go left side, transition, but now instead of giving me a menu, it's giving me this button at the bottom. So I'm gonna do Add Transition, and then you'll see right here, magic move. But you'll also notice that the icons are now down here at the bottom, and instead of a list, I actually get visuals, which is really nice to be able to see what I'm choosing versus trying to just understand. So I'm gonna press magic move, and you'll notice it did not give me the option to duplicate the slide. I have to press done. Now I can duplicate that slide. And so in the second slide, I'm gonna have the horse go into the house. So let's see what that looks like. So we have the first slide, movement into the second slide. Pretty self-explanatory. The next thing I wanna show you is create path. This is gonna be something that I think students and teachers are gonna really like to show some knowledge. So maybe I want this horse to go into the house, but I'm trying to show over. So I'm gonna to touch my horse and again, animate. Instead of giving a list, it's giving me the icons at the bottom. So I can do a build in, which same thing, it gives me those icons, but if I click add action, you're gonna see create path. So watch this, I'm gonna create the path. Now I can actually drag the horse over the bench and then into the house. And then I'm gonna click done. So let's see what that looks like. Now I'm gonna press play, so watch what happens when I click. Seemed a little bit too fast, so I'm gonna go back to this motion, touch it, and maybe I want this slide over, maybe I want this to take two and a half seconds. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. So what's really cool is I can add multiple actions. So if I go back to this animate and click the center button, I actually get a plus button. So I can make it rotate, I can make it scale, I can make it bounce, so maybe that horse is excited when it gets in there. So now when I click play, it's going to jump over the table, into the house, and then when I click again, it's excited to be home. So I think the kids, once they know where the new buttons are, are gonna be very excited to see what happens. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you, which is really neat, is once the kids have put a lot of work into some of the movement in these slides, we all know that you can export these slides as pictures and you can export them as movies, but there's one more thing I wanna show you. So if you come up here to the top right corner, three dots, we're gonna to go to our export. And again, this looks a little bit different. So we have PDF, PowerPoint, movie, but you'll see something new, animated GIF. If I click this, I'm gonna have the option, if I had multiple slides, I could choose which slides are gonna be the GIF, how big the frame rate is, and how large I want this GIF. I'm gonna go ahead and do it just like this. I'm gonna export, share, save image. Now when I go to my photos, it's going to have exported a GIF, which will play over and over and over just like this. So let me show you some examples of why this might be important. All right, so here's a couple examples I made. Here is a life cycle GIF that I used that movement that I just showed you. And so what it's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna play all the movement I made and then it's gonna reset itself and do this over and over, which would be super nice to be able to have up on a screen or kids be able to add to one of their projects. Here's another GIF I made showing some over, under, in front, and behind. So all that movement's gonna happen without me having to do anything because I exported this as a GIF. And once it's finished showing that movement, it's gonna reset and start over. All right, well I hope those quick tips were helpful. See you next time. If you found this video helpful, make sure and hit that like button. To make sure you get more videos like this, be sure to click right here to subscribe and to click the bell to make sure you get notifications. If you'd like to submit a topic or concept for future videos, there's a link in the description down below. And if you're looking for more digital learning tips and tricks, make sure to follow us on Twitter.